So I am Professor Dr. Vivek Gupta, standing on one of the exhibition booth of a very important company, Biosensors, which is a multinational company, and today is 19th of May. Uh, Euro PCR is in the world, one of the largest conference for interventional cardiologists, and we are in Paris. It is in Palais de Congrès, it's been held for last almost 30 years. It started by Jean Marco and Jean Fajade. I used to work in France in, uh, with Professor Helen Cribier in 1996, 97, 98. Ever since I am attending this meeting, almost uh, 20, 22 years. So here I am with my uh, lot of people here. I can show the, the, the arena and the beauty of this conference. And you can see a lot of exhibition booth. And my son Chaitan Gupta, who is an MBA student, and Mr. Jitu Kulkarni, uh, who is a country head for the biosensors. You can see the biosensor here. And uh, this is doing a, this company is doing a lot of innovations, a lot of work uh, being done by the company, and I am associated with this company as a as a one of the product user, user rather the client or whatever you can say. I work in Apollo Hospital in Delhi. So we are going to talk about uh, some new technique, and I let uh, Mr. Uh, Andreas Foster from Germany, who is basically uh, director marketing of biosensors and especially for the new world technology. So I will give the, the opportunity, it's rather my privilege that he can introduce the company a bit in 30 seconds, and then we can talk about the product. So thank you very much. It's very nice that we can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, I would mainly talk about the, our transcathetic heart valve, which was started with the development in 2007, so already 15 years ago. It took us almost 10 years for the complete implant, uh, development and getting the CE mark of the product. We started first at that time, 2007, uh, with the transepical system. We developed one, one and a half year transepical system and then we saw that it shifts to the transfemoral approach. Okay, so let mark. me just, just intervene in because this is a, uh, many doctors who are not cardiologists and will also watch this. Okay. The transcatheter heart valve is a new technology which is basically to treat uh, aortic valve stenosis. Aortic valve is one of the four valves which are there in the heart and this is mostly degenerative uh, aortic valve stenosis. And um, uh, the, normally the treatment of choice for this thing, Jitu you can come in the picture, uh, normally the treatment of choice is surgical aortic valve replacement and uh, with the innovation work, innovative work done by uh, Professor Alan Kribier in 96, uh, 97, 98 when I used to work in Goa, he was doing a lot of animal experimentation and the film, first in man implantation was done on 16th April 2002 and it's almost uh, 20 years, like exactly 20 years and uh, uh, 20 years celebration is being done in Goa on 21st of May so what he is talking about is a technology which is a uh, little different from uh, the Dr. Krivier's technology which is a uh, 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 balloon expandable valve uh, through the, at, at the moment the, another company is promoting that product. So he said he started working in 2007. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, they, they've done after a lot of experimentation and work, they got the C mark. What is C mark? C mark is a standardization. The mark by given by the European uh, organization so that it is can be used in the market and that's the, the for example in India it is a DCGI drug control government of India and you have a CE mark and for America it is FDA Federal Drug Administration so you got the CE mark in which year in 2017 2017 so after 10 years of development we got the CE mark okay after 10 years of it. so can you yes. tell me about this valve so I have introduced this is a non-surgical valve implantation for aortic valve stenosis. Now, Mr. Andreas will tell us about the valve. Show the valve more closely. So, this is the self-expandable heart valve, which we developed over 10 years. It's a supraannular valve, which means that the new valve level is above the native valve level. So, this has the advantage that you normally have better hemodynamics because the leaflets are higher and the, and the new valve are higher. That means you're not putting the valve inside the valve. It is a little above right. the native valve. Right. That is known as supraannular. That means the valve leaflet, which is the original natural leaflet of the body, they keep about one one millimeter above it, something up to three millimeters. 
two three millimeters. So yes. how it is anchored? Can you tell the audience how it is anchored so, then? Yes, anchoring. So, so it's a self-expandable. This means it expands by its own. The material is nitinol. Yeah, the material is nitinol, and the nitinol has this uh, feature to expand at a certain temperature level. So what we have, we have smaller cells in the in the lower part, and therefore we have higher radial force uh, as in the upper part where we have bigger cells and we have a little bit less. And this is how it is anchoring. Force. That means because and of the shape of the right. valve, which is uh, here, it is more expanding. Right. It is less. It is anchored in, into the aorta just above it, the valve. Yeah, it, it anchors through the radial force of this lower because part. The radial force. Okay. Yes. The radial because, force. Because of nitinol, it produces gives a lot of radial force, right. and that helps in anchoring. The right. valve just above the native valve, yep. just immediately above. Right. Okay. In the annulus and then the new valve. It is valve above is the valve or inside the valve? Because in, I want to understand it from it you. It anchors inside the valve and the new valve plane is above the valve. Because we have 12 millimeters, so we anchor in the valve, 2 3 millimeters, and then we are 7 8 millimeters above the valve with the new okay, valve. So plane. let me explain, it's a very good point. Two three millimeters inside the valve, which is stenosed valve, right. so that the valve becomes open, yep. and about seven millimeter above the valve. Right. For the part of the anchor. Yep. Okay. So it's a little different from Edwards. Right. Right. It's a little yeah. different from the Edwards. Right. Okay. The Edwards valve has the valve plane on the same level as the native. Right. The native and that there it is the same level. Here yes. it is a little superior level. Anything else you want to tell? Yeah. What we also use, we use the same. Wife as the market leader Edwards, we use bovine pericardium for the whole bovine pericardium. So it's a very important thing. Bovine pericardium is used to make the valve, which as you can see here, it's not there. The whole leaflets are not here instead. In no, this is textile to, to demonstrate, but normally it's bovine. Bovine. Bovine means pigs. So pig pericardium is utilized to make a bioprosthetic valve, which is put inside this methanol stent. And then when you put this, the valve opens up and actually it's a pericardium of the pigs which is used. Bovine is pig? No, it's uh, sheep. Cow. 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 I'm sorry. It's sorry cow. for this big mistake of mine. It's a pericardium of the cow which is being used for this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also nice for the Arabian and maybe also in, in India market because for the Muslim, if they have bovine pericardium, they like the wife more than the porcine, which is from the pig. It's other way around for the Hindus. Yeah. Are we not going to talk about that? We are not going to talk about that. It's actually technology, it's a science. So we go beyond religion. Yeah. Because finally it is a utility for saving lives right. of human beings. Whether it is coming from the cow or pigs is different. So it is actually uh, the pro purpose is to make a bioprosthetic valve which helps in treating the aortic valve stenosis. Yeah, in the bovine pericardium, the choice for it was there were a lot of data from the surgical part. So this is why we use. Can you just show the few pictures here? I can yes. show the pictures. So, this is how Did we. Can you show some pictures here? Yeah, this is how we implant mm -hmm. how we implant the valve. Mm -hmm. So the the valve is already. Uh, loaded into the delivery system mm -hmm. and we can force now the valve into into the patient mm -hmm. which we can also do record mm -hmm. so and what you see below mm -hmm. this is the native analysis mm -hmm. of the patient with a lot of calcification mm -hmm. so this is this dark part mm -hmm. so we go in a little bit into the ventricle mm -hmm. we stay here and then we do a first step. I can maybe explain it on, on here if you if you would like to do this. So we have a park, a drive in the neutral position. It's like with the in the car. Automatic. So if we are on the parking position, this is normally where we go into the patient. So it's parked and no movement is possible. Mm. So at the position where we are, where we are now, mm -hmm. we go to the drive position. Mm -hmm. A liver came up, mm -hmm. and now we can start implanting the valve. Mm -hmm. So, and if you watch there, mm -hmm. then show, I can show me how the implantation. So it clicks, and then you see, then you see the cartridge is opening. So. 
Okay. okay. I think you have to pull it a little, or no? Yeah. So until the end, mm -hmm. so it stop. And what we have now, we have a kind of belly shape. The mm -hmm. the flow is still going around mm -hmm. the valve. So and now we position it. So this means that this markering has to be aligned to the pigtail catheter, which is in a non-coronary cusp. So we pull on the system until we reach this level on here. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're pulling it here. Yes. So and just show my hand. Is it possible to actually it is yes, yes. pulled and pushed? Yes. It's like this. This right. is the groin of the patient. Yep. Okay. So then, and then now I need the help of a second operator. So if you could fix here, mm -hmm. then I have now, I can now release the valve. It's being released. Just show that so how it is releasing. By, by pressing this, mm -hmm. and maybe we should also now look in there. So I go with the tip forward, the valve implants, and the nose cone is going back into the valve. So this is the, the main step for the whole implantation. So the valve is now already anchored into the annulus mm -hmm. and the valve is also already working in this phase. Now so you remove the whole system. What we can do now, we can first check if the position is correct. So we do an injection and I would say it looks good. Mm -hmm. So now we can decide. We do now remove the, sa we remove the safety wings mm -hmm. beside, and then we start implanting the valve totally. So if you oh, this is the full implantation. That means you check by the aortic root angiogram, and then you remove it. Okay. So. So, yeah. And now the valve is implanted, we can take out the system. Mm -hmm. system is being taken out. Right. So, mm -hmm. the valve is implanted. So, easy, we have a three-step implantation technique. So, first open the middle part, mm -hmm. first open the middle part, mm -hmm. and then we do the Proximally release and then the final release. So first the middle part, then the proximal release and yes. the final release. Right. So this is actually you can see this is uh, by the name of uh, Zelegra. Yep, Allegra is the name of the valve. Ah. And this is the valve, and you can see the valve is fully deployed here. So this is what we have done: is putting a valve without opening the chest through the groin by a valve which is a bioprosthetic valve with the help of methanol structure like this and then the aortic valve stenosis is fully treated and the patient hemodynamics the agent becomes normal and the patient's quality of life and quantity of life also goes up it's very important Definitely. normally aortic valve stenosis the risk of death is very high unless you either do surgical yeah. valve replacement that is opening the chest or we do a non-surgical valve it's not replacement it's putting a new valve yep. and with the help of groin and new technology it was first done by professor alan kribier in 2002 which was a balloon expandable technology biosensors has come up with a new technology which is a self-expanding supra annular valve methanol frame and bovine pericardium for using this. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let Thank me just much. talk uh, about my son, uh, Chaitanya yep. Gupta, who's helping me uh, and learning a new technology. Ah, He's uh, okay. doing a medical medicine in India. Yeah. Ah, and uh, Mr. Uh, and uh, Andrea, the yeah. new friend yeah. from Germany, and Jitu yes. is here. So I think I should finish off this Facebook live, and a lot of people yeah. will learn and will talk back in India. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very On 19th much. of May yeah. in Paris, in yeah. Palais de Congress. Thank, Thank you. you.